A bit as of late, I feel like I've been stuck in a rut, a bit directionless regarding my present, whether involving this channel trying to grow or put more creative drive in my original concepts, either as a brand, franchise, screenplay, IP, or creating animations as I'm still learning the gist of or doing more in voice acting since I finally know how to make concise recordings. I felt everything pass on by as those a bit younger than I am are exceeding thanks to their efforts and those of my age advance further. Aside from being relatively skilled in my talents and passions, I want further use of them in practice to build a sustainable foundation for myself. Now, what does this diatribe have in common with, with the subject I'm highlighting? Well, you're about to wait and see. We Bear Bear is a Cartoon Network production which aired in 2015 and concluded in 2020. Created by Daniel Chong, a former storyboard artist for Pixar, he also created the basis for his opus in a series of webcomics that have spurned the creation of the series. It is something interesting that something crafted from simple ideas can blossom into something much bigger than it already is. For me, this came in at a suitable moment. Because unlike most millennials, I grew up without cable and missed most of everything it could have meant for a kid growing up. But just because I didn't, doesn't mean I didn't experience much from child-geared cable content had to offer. Such as borrowing DVDs from the library, checking out their websites and enjoying the games and trinkets. And mostly imagining my own creative characters partaking in those that exist. Anyway, let's fast forward a bit to the later years of Cartoon Network's renaissance period. Anything in between is worth a video in its own right and so forth. In my 20s, I had creativity on my mind and enjoyed what CN had to offer since its lineup harkens to my own enjoyment. From seeing the Steven Universe main event jailbreak, which lit most of social media, a random promo for a new series came. At first, I didn't know what to think of the randomness and out of their nature of what I was seeing, but I took a chance on it and a few weeks later of the episodes running, this hit the spot. The reception of the series was undaunted with praise of being a metaphor for of millennial upbringing and what growing adults are facing even when something such as this is geared towards children. In a similar vein, Adventure Time and Regular Show appeal to those in much different ways, such as AT growing up with its young audience and tackling more adult areas and complexities with Fiona and Cake, and Regular Show having relatable 20-somethings to follow as they figure out their place in the world and challenging their struggles to make it through anything. I argue that Steven Universe is also in that same place, but that's for another time. For something such as this series, one would expect quick-witted, off-the-wall hijinks akin to what Cart's Network has built on its early days of bringing Hanna-Barbera elements into the 90s and 2000s, which works to memorable results, but much different in execution as we follow three brothers of three different bear races finding themselves in the epicenter of modern life as they endure regular human elements and activities mostly relevant to modern racial identities and what place they partake in our era, mostly pertaining towards young Asian Americans. You can definitely see the representation as is it set on a mostly diverse real world area such as San Fran. Even though I'm not Asian but have friends that do, they feel similar sentiments. Anyway, the characters of focus have much to align as well, as well as myself and maybe most of y'all as well, so let's get this started. Grizz, lackadaisical, but a bit lackluster in socializing. Grizz to me is one character that describes me to a T. A desire to have admiration and focus drawn towards him and his abilities as well. He's a main character in his life, but, but seeks to be as expressive as he can while remaining true to himself. He's more of a people pleaser and eager to impress. Even though they may get out of hand, he may reach for the stars, but his love for his brothers keeps him grounded. 
He's quite adventurous with his brothers and tackling what new trending escapade brings in more attention. His quirk that he's sociable and likable and pretty wise once he learns more of the ramification of his present actions. I sometimes carry whenever I reminisce on a cringeworthy act I made long, long ago. Moving on. Panda. Insecureness is a trait that no one is immune to, as well as overall embarrassment and loneliness. But that doesn't hinder Pan Pan from getting through the day. We all try to get to our passions and ambitions out there as much to little or no avail, and even we get distracted by our interests. In Panda's case, it's anime and arch. Arts, which are mine as well. We strive for more in creative exploits, which makes his interests to a T. Most of the course of the series, he has made attempts to seek romance as he's often successful at some points, but not really lasting. Yet he still avails as he seeks validation on social media with the same results. On the fact he's more occupied on his mobile device harkens to myself when I used it to create my, my mobile phone arts that I still do to this day. I spare. Sometimes when we deal with much, one can only say a few short words at short intervals. Because whatever is processing could be years of experience, trauma, and regression. That is the case with Ice Bear, a polar bear who is too cool, no pun intended, for words. His character is a stoic one, but he isn't lonesome. His main trait that he speaks in the third person. Don't ditch Ice Bear. Amusing as it may seem, a trait he's adopted from his upbringing along with a bevy of skills that benefits his brothers. He's basically the foundation of this hierarchy that his brothers formed as together as they act as one. Ice Bear's past has a tendency of catching up with him as he aims to move on. In relation, it could apply to most others in these feelings of relation such as struggling with education and of the like. Surrounding our three heroes are their friends and supporting reoccurring characters that have connected with and, and contributed heavily in their lives with problem solving and being companions alike, such as alike with some shared in, even with the relatable messages that we all take it to heart, like Grizz's movie monologue of the manor. Alas, four seasons of adventure and a movie that dwells further into our trio's complexities and relationships. We bear bears left open with relatable scenarios, especially on this day and age of racial upheaval. We are finding more and more ways of addressing our reliability in manners we take here. For others, it cannot be the case, but I may not be alone as others are finding this out for themselves. I came into this a bit lost in what I need to do, but I didn't want this to come off as a review of sorts, but in a video essay form as well since one of my major strengths and favorite pastimes is writing in my own manner and expressing fondly. It has renewed certain vigors in my ambitions and I'm looking forward enough to continue. So with that out of the way, like, share, sub, and comment, and I'll catch you all later.